This is a general discussion about the properties of gases. So let's take a look at some of the properties of gases to start with. We're going to do a review of the kinetic theory of gases. First, we're going to assume that gas particles have negligible volume compared to the container size. So if we have a container that has gas particles in it, the size of the gas particles is very, very small. Secondly, we're going to assume that gas particles have no intermolecular forces, IMF. In other words, they are not attracted or repelled by each other. And then lastly, gas particles move rapidly and randomly. Let's take a look at the variables that we'll use to describe gases. First, there is pressure. Next, temperature. Remember, we always need to use kelvins anytime we're doing calculations that involve temperatures with gases. Third, there's volume. Generally, we use liters, but we can also use mLs. And then finally, there's N, which stands for the number of moles. Let's look at three factors qualitatively that affect the gas pressure. First, we're going to look at changing the amount of gas particles in a closed container. And to do that, we're going to look at a simulation from the University of Colorado, PHE. All right, here we have uh, the simulation from PHET. And we're going to put some gas molecules into this container here. And we're going to hold the temperature constant. What we're interested in seeing here is what happens as we increase the number of moles of gas. Now, first of all, let me draw your attention to uh, the gas particles are moving at different speeds. They're crashing into the container walls, which is generating pressure. And they're bouncing off each other elastically. They don't tend to stick together. So these are acting like ideal gas molecules. We have uh, 63 molecules in this chamber. And our pressure is roughly 0 0.30 atmospheres. Let's take a look at what happens to pressure as we increase the number of moles of gas. And so let's just pump this thing again. We were at 63. Let's put in another load. And we're going to go up to 112, very close to double of what we had in there before. And notice that our gas pressure increases. And we had 63. Let's go up to 126. We were at roughly uh, 30, and we're coming back up to uh, about twice that. So you can see as we increase the number of particles of gas in a container, the pressure increases. And it's because we now have more collisions with the walls. That's what generates pressure. We have more particles, therefore more collisions. OK, so we've taken a look at what happens as we increase the number of moles in a container. As you increase the number of moles, we see the pressure go up. Uh, you did this when you were a kid, when you pumped up one of those big red playground balls. You wanted to uh, get the pressure higher in it before you went ahead and played kickball, so you pumped it up. Its ch size didn't really change, but you had put more gas molecules into it, so the pressure inside the ball increased, and it was firmer. You got that nice big bounce when you went to uh, kick it. So that's the first one. We've done this one. Let's take a look at the next one. We're going to change the uh, container gas the container's volume. We're going to keep temperature and the number of moles constant. So let's go back to the simulation and see what. All right, here we have the container. We have temperature staying constant. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this little spaceman, and we're going to cut the container volume roughly in half by pushing this wall here to about right here. Notice we're, oh, at about 0.69 atmospheres. We've got 126 particles. Let's go ahead and shove this in and watch what happens to our pressure. You're seeing those little ice cubes come in at the bottom because we're keeping the temperature constant. So we have to cool down things a little bit. As we push this container wall in, it's actually transferring kinetic energy to the molecules. This is a um, physics simulation, so it captures a lot of variables here. All right, so now we're at about half the volume. And take a look at what has happened to our pressure. It has just about doubled as we've halved the volume. The molecules in here still have the same kinetic energy because they're at the same temperature. But since we've got a smaller container volume, there's less wall area, so there's more collisions per unit area of wall. So we see the pressure increase. Now let's return back to the notes. 
All right, another way to uh, look at this would be using a bicycle pump. So let's say we've got a uh, bicycle pump. So I'm drawing this as a, a cylinder. Sorry, my drawing isn't very good. And there's your bicycle pump. And you've got the piston in the bicycle pump. So there's the piston. Oh, that's a really lousy drawing. Sorry about that. Okay, so you got the piston. As you push the piston down, you compress the gas that's left in here. So your gas is left down here. And as you compress this gas, the pressure increases. It gets harder and harder to push the piston down. Well, let's take a look at the last variable that we're going to check out here, and that will be changing temperature. This time, we'll keep the volume and the number of moles constant. So let's see what's going to happen. Now let's go ahead and bring this wall back here a little bit. So we'll drag the spaceman back out of here. In fact, we'll make it even a little bit bigger than it was. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be changing the temperature. And we're going to keep our volume nice and constant. So let's go ahead and check there that we'll keep our volume constant. And we're going to first increase the temperature to about 600 Kelvin and watch what happens to the pressure. So let's add some heat. We were about at uh, 0.60 atmospheres. So that's going up too high there. Uh, let's come back down to about 600. All right. And you can see that our pressure has just about doubled as we doubled our temperature. So now let's bring our temperature on down, and we'll bring it down to 100 K. Look what's happening to the speed of the molecules. As we begin to cool things down, you can see that the molecules are moving more and more slowly. So what is happening here is since the molecules are moving more slowly, one, they are colliding with the walls less frequently. That decreases the pressure. And then when they do hit the walls, they are moving more slowly, so they are not hitting the walls with as much force. If we were to continue to decrease the temperature, theoretically, we would see all molecular motion completely stop as we reached zero Kelvin. And you can see that the molecular motion gets slower and slower and slower as we reduce the temperature. Go ahead and stop there. All right, so let's go ahead and write down why the temperature increases pressure that we talked about earlier. One, what we have is uh, fewer collisions with the wall. So fewer wall collisions. Oops, that's if we decrease pressure. Let's try that again. More wall collisions. And then the other thing that is happening is the molecules are moving faster, or the particles are moving faster. So second, the collisions are more forceful, or collisions have more force. All right, that's it for uh, the descriptive uh, part of the gas laws.